Well, the African Union has reaffirmed its commitment to support Africa's new path for attaining inclusive and sustainable economic growth and development through the actualization of the Agenda 2063 of the African Union. The Economic, Social and Cultural Council, known as AU ECOSOC, actually was established in July 2004 as an advisory organ composed of different social and professional groups of AU member states to provide an opportunity for African civil society organizations to play an active role in contributing to the AU's principles, policies, and programs. Now, the AU Agenda 2063 tagged the Africa we want is the African blueprint and master plan for transforming Africa into the global powerhouse of the future and is the continent's strategic framework that aims to deliver on its goal for inclusive and sustainable development. It is also a concrete manifestation of the Pan-African drive for unity, self-determination, freedom, progress, and collective prosperity pursued under Pan-Africanism and African Renaissance. Well, I'm being joined by the country representative of the African Union Economic, Social, and Cultural Council, ECOSOC, Mr. John Oba Olasukomi. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Olasukomi. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's wonderful being here. So what would be your economic impact assessment of ECOSOC? Uh, okay, you're talking about the economic impact? Of ECOSOC. I don't? Yes, what would be you your the economic, the economic impact of ECOSOC? Uh, yes, uh, it, that, this is a very broad question and uh, it require a lot of time to answer. But I want to say that uh, AU ECOSOC is actually, like you said, an adversary organ and that is meant to rally around and to, to rally around professional bodies to contribute to the, I mean, the development of Africa. So what, what, what I will say is that the, 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 the economic value can be viewed in, the, in a very different way. First, how we partner with different organizations to ensure that, yes, they key into the agenda and the policies and the objective of the African Union. But it, you, you can't put it in a, financial, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a financial context, in a total financial context in, uh, as a whole. But you can look at it in a, the, the way, way you, you, you can justify that, look at it in the level of, um, how do I put it, what we do and the people we engage to ensure that they leverage on the African Union to achieve the, the, the agenda. First of all, what we've been doing has been that we've been going around private sectors, sensitizing private sectors, and then collaborating with them to, uh, to take advantage of the platform of the African Union to actualize their both. The, to, to, to actualize the objective and also to contribute to, contribute to the development of Africa. So it, it, it's a two-way thing. First, in the, you can't quantify it in the real sense. The, the agenda, I hope I answered your, your, your... Sure, the, the Agenda 2063 is tagged the Africa we want. Now, that includes uh, a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. Now, what plans have you put in place towards achieving these aspirations? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we want to say that for, for us in Nigeria and also with other of my colleagues in the African member uh, state, a lot we've been doing. First, we've been going around and uh, trying to see how to talk to both the political office holders and then the private sector on how to take advantage of, 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 of this. And not, not just taking advantage as per, that we, we, what we are saying is that they, we, they can leverage on this, on the policies of the African Union to further improve their businesses, improve whatever, uh, I mean, they are engaging in. But for instance, in Nigeria, we have several programs lined up and that, that we are, we are, we are, we are uh, doing to ensure that we achieve this agenda. First is uh, the, the, our partnership with, a, with some of the private sector uh, individuals, uh, the, the, the private sector. First, we, we, we have several uh, individuals in Nigeria 
organizations that we are partnering with, like the continent building uh, initiatives in Lagos that uh, we are partnering with to ensure that some of the program of the African Union are actually that they have been also they, they have been doing. After all, they have been in the business of in, in the area of culture and tourism. They've been in the business for about 36 years now. What we are trying to do is to see how we can partner with them and see how we can re replicate what they've been doing in most part of uh, Nigeria, and not just Nigeria alone, in other parts of Africa. Take, for instance, culture is a very huge sector that Africans have not been tapping into. And then we prefer to look at what the Europeans, the Americans have been doing that are far, far inferior to what we have in Africa. So what we are doing with Continent Building Initiative as one of our partners is to ensure that what they've achieved so far are replicated in other parts of Nigeria and also in other parts of the continent. And we also have what we are doing in the area of IIFTA, African Continental Free Trade Agre Agreement. We've gone out to about six states now to sensitize the government on how they could take advantage of this uh, agreement. And then we're also partnering with Abuja Chamber of Commerce, and then we're also partnering with Continent Building Initiatives on how to ensure that youth, Nigerian youth entrepreneurs, are brought together to, to, be, able to, to be sensitized and then to be trained on how they could take advantage of that policy. So these are more of, I mean, that, that we're doing to ensure that that agenda is, is achieved. All right, we are talking about um, achieving, you know, inclusive and sustainable growth, and that you did mention culture and tourism. Looking back here in, in Nigeria, aside from culture and um, tourism, which other sector, what other sectors of the Nigerian economy are your main target towards achieving this sustainable growth? Agenda 23 is a broad, it's a very broad agenda that encompasses every sector of the economy. It encompasses every sector of governance, every sector of, of, of the society. So what we are doing is we partner with several organizations, both private, uh, uh, both government institutions, to ensure that some of these are, are, may are achieved. For instance, we are, we, are, we are looking at how to organize gemstone and uh, solid mineral exhibition. And this is one of the first of its kind, where we have a lot being done. But what we are trying to do is to bring it home, to indigenize it, and to ensure that we did not only exhibit some of these uh, gems, but we trained youth on how to take advantage of it. Value addition. We, we, are, we are going to bring youth together. We are going to bring investors into, the, into Nigeria. And then we are going to show them the work we have. And then we bring our youth to be able to polish it, establish gem stores, establish a lot of training opportunities, collaborating with uh, 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 an agency like a scheme like uh, the uh, NYSC to ensure that these youth are trained and then they can become a, a form of train the trainer program and they can in turn also be training others. This program alone can employ, can create as much as 60 million jobs in Nigeria and across the continent. So what we are doing is we are also partnering. It's one of the major reasons why we are partnering with Abuja Chamber of Commerce and are also partnering with uh, Continental Building Initiatives. What we want to do is to ensure that our solid mineral sector are well developed and are well improved. And then we bring, we leverage on the platform of African Union to bring investors from countries like Sri Lanka, from countries like Thailand, from countries like, like uh, Turkey, to ensure that they come to Nigeria to invest in this. By so doing, you create a lot of jobs, you take a lot of people out, and then the sector is properly developed such that the, 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 the government can now confidently generate its revenue from the sector while also empowering youth, empowering those that are already in the sector. So that is just one as aspect of what we've been doing. Also, we have programs on health. We have programs also on, uh, 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 on, um, on sports. We partner 
with uh, Pan African Youth uh, Friendship Game. We also have a program on sports that is dealing mainly on malaria. Uh, that is handling on malaria. That is handling malaria uh, project. Now in in, in Nasarawa, we are having our first first job malaria clinic, purely malaria clinic in Nasarawa State. We have our center there that we are going to uh, launch probably by by next month. We are going to launch it. So these are these are more at some of the programs that we are engaging in to ensure that that agenda is achieved. After we've been able, if, Nigeria is just being used as a pilot state, as a pilot uh, country. After this, we now extend to other African countries where we sell this idea to them. We have oh, some of my members I've been talking to, some of my colleagues in uh, other African countries, in Kenya, in uh, in, in, in uh, Gabon, in. Uh, 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 Ghana, in Syria alone, that we've been talking to on how to also replicate this in, uh, in their country. And they are, they are excited about it, and they are ready to, 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 to run along with us. All right, now, one of the aspirations is to achieve a peaceful and secure Africa, if I'm correct. But um, we know that insecurity is a major problem in Nigeria. What plans do you have in that area? Yeah, we, like we said... Oh, incidentally, this year is declared the year of uh, uh, silence the gun. And because of that, one of the projects we roll out this year is also to look at the private sector, the security, private security organizations. These are areas that have not been exploited, but to many, they are seeing it as a business, what they do just to earn money. But we are looking at is that Africa, Nigeria and Africa can be better policed, can be better secured, when you train this set of security individuals to be professional, where they may not carry arms, but they are, they are trained such that because most times why we, 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 some of the criminals, uh, why there are insecurities because even the citizens don't trust the conventional uh, security agencies. Some of them are scared of approaching them, and by the time they come, they feel, they, some of them feel that if they approach them, they may now be the victim. They may be victimized. And because of that, you see some of them shying away. But this set, set of people can confidently approach these private security organizations, talk to them, approach them, talk to them on some of the problem. They can confide in them, report issues that, I mean, that report security threats to them. And that is why we are partnering with some of these organizations to ensure that Corporate security organizations are trained. They are connected, they are invested in to ensure that they help to further police the community. You know, I've been mentioning continental building initiatives. I always mention that because I know that they seem to have everything that we are talking about, about security, about tourism, economic development, everything. They, they like the, 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 the uh, corporate guys, under the same organization. When you approach them, you discover that they perform a multi-purpose tax. They secure you, they carry you as a driver, uh, 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 they, they can be, go as your driver, they can follow you as your orderly, and they, they perform a, a whole lot of duty that enhances the ability to further secure the, 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 the individual, to further secure the community. And that is what we are trying to, it's not just this straight jacket stuff, we want a situation whereby there will be maturity, there will be, uh, how do I uh, put it, insecurity operations. So that is why we are partnering with corporate guards to ensure that the training that corporate guard receives, or their, 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 the trainings can be replicated also. We bring other corporate organizations together, train them. And aside from that, we also give experts advice, suggestions to the government on security issues. We have experts among us who are, who are, who are experts in security issues that we, we look at the situation and then we give our experts uh, our opinion to the government on how to tackle some of these uh, security issues. So, so that those are some of the things we are doing I think time will not permit me to talk about more uh, others. 
All right, let, now let's talk about our institutions. You know that the quality of institutions in many African countries is nothing to chair. Uh, what is ECOSOC doing to strengthen institutions, not just in Africa, actually, but uh, Nigeria in particular? Yes, the, 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 uh, fortunately, we, we, we have been uh, in, this, in the system all these years talking to uh, the government on how to empower, strengthen institutions instead of individuals. And we, will not, we are not diverting from there. There are policies of the African Union, there are policies of ECOSOC that demands that we talk to government, we relate with them. Though it's not going to be in an, I, like an activist. We talk to them in such a way that they will understand that institutions need to be strengthened, need to be given their freedom to perform, rather than an individual. We've traveled to about six different states in Nigeria. We've met with several governors. And then one of the messages we've been passing to them is how to strengthen institutions. And we've been talking to them on how to ensure that is it just a judiciary? Is it the legislative sector? Is it the security arms of the that they are giving the free arm to operate. And that was why we are, that is why we are also cooperating, uh, partnering with uh, EFCC to ensure that they, 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 be, and they are able to do their work such that they will not be subject to the control or uh, the control of either the government or whoever that uh, they may be reporting to. So what we are doing, we've been giving that, we've been sensitizing we will also be going around to ensure that we bring them and show them some of the policies of the African Union that demands that institutions should be strengthened rather than individual. Thank you. All right. Now, are, are you concerned about this um, coronavirus um, spread? Do you see that impacting ECOSOL's uh, agenda? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm concerned. And also, I would say I'm not concerned because... In, in every negativity, there is a positivity uh, attached to it, yes. But my, my joy is that most African countries have been proactive. Look at what is going on. I just listened to your guests. I saw, I heard a lot of what they've been doing. And that is the same way most African countries have been uh, tackling this, this virus. You remember we have some, something like that before, like the, the, the SARS. Uh, and then the Ebola, and then we're able to tackle that. And I'm oh. sure this one also is just a face, okay. it will fizzle out. We but another so. thing is that I think we this other, further helps us to, to, to look at the, the agenda of the African Union, building a continent that is developed by its own people. Mm. Now it is time for us to now start looking inward. Because of all these type of uh, diseases, it's not time for us to start looking inward and ensuring that we look at our own people to develop this sector. We have a lot of experts, health All right. experts, All that right, develop uh, vaccines. All right, talk, yes. uh, Mr. Olasokubi, I'm sure <laughs> there's quite a lot to uh, talk about on this particular issue. Anyway, thank you very much um, for your time there. Mr. John Oba Olasokubi is the representative of the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council here in Nigeria. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll do an opening call to London as well as the Nigerian Stock Exchange to stay with us.